What's up guys? I realize at this point, I've talked a lot about the benefits of including some sandbag work in your training program, but I've never really gone over much on the specifics of how you actually do the thing. So in response to a question I got on a previous video about breathing and bracing, I figured today I would just take you guys through the basic lift from the ground to the lap, from the lap to chest height, and then the carry. I'll go over breathing and bracing and all the technique cues that are going through my head when I do it. So hopefully this will help some of you guys out. Before you even start setting up to lift the sandbag, you first wanna make sure the sand is evenly distributed. Before every lift, I'll roll the bag back and forth a few times to accomplish this. But if you are using a tightly packed bag, this won't be much of an issue. Then you gotta decide if you plan on doing a horizontal or a vertical lift. Let's start with the horizontal lift first because I do think it's a bit easier. There are two things you always need to remember. One, it will always be easier to brace from a standing position. And two, you always wanna shorten the lever as much as you can. Consider the barbell conventional deadlift for a moment. The bar is way out in front of you, which increases the distance between your center of mass and the weight you're trying to lift. This creates a lever you must overcome. This is why most guys can lift more weight on a Jefferson or a hack deadlift versus a conventional deadlift. The bar starts closer to their center of mass. We want to accomplish the same thing here when lifting a sandbag, so begin by standing directly over top of the bag. Now we should go over how to actually get your hands into position and how to brace with the Valsalva maneuver. The Valsalva maneuver is defined as expiring against a closed windpipe. There are many different ways to teach this, but let me describe my favorite. Begin by lying flat on your back on a solid surface. The ground is best. Place a small weight plate, five to 10 pounds will do, on your stomach, right where your belly button is. Now take a deep breath and imagine the air is filling up your stomach all the way down to your hips. Your stomach should expand and the weight plate should rise. No, you are not actively trying to push out your stomach. The breath of air will do this for you. Continue breathing in as much air as is possible until your stomach is completely filled. Imagine the breath is expanding your stomach from all angles, front, back, sides, all the way in 360 degrees. Once you've taken in all the air you can, flex your abs hard. Your core should now feel completely solid all the way around. The Valsalva maneuver is the most effective and safe way to lift a heavy weight. Using this method will take most of the burden from your spine and place it on the muscles, which is where we want it. So you're gonna wanna do this before every single part of every single lift that you do anytime you're lifting a sandbag. Now let's move on to actually picking the thing up. To get my hand set up to pick up the bag, I'll begin by using both hands to wedge one hand under whichever side of the sandbag looks heavier. Usually that's gonna be the bottom. And again, if you're using a tightly packed bag, it may not matter which side you choose, just make sure to alternate back and forth to stay as balanced as you can. Once the first hand is set, I'll use somewhat of a scooping motion to get my other hand in place. Start with an extended wrist and push the underside of your arm against the side of the bag. From here, scoop your hand underneath by moving your wrist from extended to flexed. It will take some practice to find the exact right spot to put your hands, but with a little time, you should get a feel for it pretty quick. One method I've used to get better at this first part of the lift and learn the skill of getting into position quickly is to practice bending over and getting your hands set up as fast as you can without actually lifting the bag. Once you're set up to go, it's time to lift the bag. There are four main things to remember here. Butt up, straight arms, squeeze, and lead with the upper chest or sternum. Let me go over each briefly. All right, let's start off with butt up, or you could say keep your hips high. While you will want to bend your knees a bit, when lifting heavier bags, you'll need to emphasize a hinge more than a squat. Thinking of keeping your butt raised up high will put you into the optimal position to lift more weight. Straight arms. While your arms will be in a neutral position, which is a lot safer on the bicep tendon than lifting with an underhand grip, you will still be lifting a weight that is much heavier than the biceps could handle on their own. Keeping straight arms will go a long way towards preventing bicep injuries. While some arm bend will inevitably happen, trying to keep your arms straight, especially at the start of the movement, will help. Also remember, the straighter your arms are, the less you'll need to bend over to get into position, which means more weight lifted. One thing that's really helped me is to initiate the pull with straight arms and my shoulders down or depressed as far as is possible. Once I'm nearing my knees, rather than bending my arms to reach the lap position, I'll shrug my shoulders. This is often enough extra lift to lap the bag. All right, the next thing to remember is squeeze. 
This one's pretty simple. Always squeeze the bag as hard as you can. Imagine you're trying to bring your wrists and your elbows all the way towards each other. This will lead to more muscle involvement and in a more stable and repeatable lifting technique. Finally, the last thing to remember is lead with the upper chest or sternum. This is the same cue you'd use with a barbell deadlift. Leading with the sternum will make sure you're involving as much muscle as you can while keeping your back as flat as is possible. By nature, sandbag lifting will require a more rounded back than, say, lifting a barbell will, but this doesn't mean you shouldn't at least mentally visualize keeping a neutral spine. This will make you feel much more solid and secure when lifting a sandbag. So with all these ideas in mind, lift the bag by raising your upper chest and pushing the ground away with your feet. Remember, you should have a solid brace when doing this. As I mentioned before, once you approach knee height, shrug your shoulders to get a bit more clearance while at the same time bending your knees and entering a squat position. The bag should naturally end up resting on your thighs at this point, and you can breathe and adjust all you want from this position. From here, there are two main ways you can go about raising the bag to carry height. The first is pretty straightforward and much easier if you're using a heavy weight. Simply re-brace and stand all the way up with straight and fully extended arms and start walking. This method is a lot more taxing on the grip, but is still a worthwhile variation. I'll often use this method when starting out with a new heavier bag or a stone as a way to build my strength and familiarity with the new object. Remember to take in as much air as you can before you stand up. Breathing and bracing while moving with a heavy weight is kind of a balancing act. You need to breathe, obviously, or you'll pass out. But you don't want to let go of your brace because once it's gone, it will be extremely difficult to get back from this position. Luckily for us, this particular type of carry is very forgiving when it comes to breathing and bracing. Because the bag is down near your hips and isn't pressed up against your lungs, you can get away with suboptimal technique, which makes this carry a very good learning tool. That said, you can't afford to get lazy here. Do everything you can to master proper form while you can, because once you move on from here, you won't have a choice. An easy way to visualize proper breathing and bracing is to imagine your torso is cast from iron. Doing the Valsalva maneuver and expanding your core in 360 degrees creates the mold, and once you're braced, there's no yielding from this position because you've become a solid piece of metal. With that in mind, all you have to do is breathe as needed. Imagine the breath going in and out of your stomach, propelling you forward without compromising the integrity of your iron cast figure. You'll also want to think tall spine or stand proud. Your body will naturally try to shift the burden onto your low back by arching the spine. We want to prevent this. Keeping a tall spine or standing proud is also much more athletic and safe. By standing proud, you'll be strengthening the proper muscles and developing a proper movement pattern for transfer to everyday life. A big reason for doing carries is to improve your posture and stride after all, and you wouldn't walk around normally with a fully extended back. Now let's go back to the second method for carrying a sandbag when starting with the bag resting horizontally on your lap. This one does have more of a learning curve, but once you get it down, it's addicting. It just feels awesome to lift this way, so what you want to do is this. Position the bag so it's off-center, so one side of the bag is going to be hanging off one of your legs more than the other side. You can reposition once the bag is already on your lap, but with practice, you may do this by bringing one of your legs in right as you bring the bag to your lap. I prefer to have the bottom of the bag be the side that hangs off the leg. Now, this next part does seem like it could carry with it an increased risk to the bicep tendon, but the reality is the arm is very strong when in a flexed position. People can zercher squat 400 pounds without any bicep trouble for a reason. So what you'll do is place one of your arms underneath the side of the bag that's hanging off your leg and place your other arm over top of the bag near the center. It's important to remember that even though your arm is underneath the bag, you're not lifting with your bicep. Your arm is simply acting as a stabilizer which will transfer power from your hips into the bag. It's essential that your arm remains flexed. You don't want the bicep to lengthen or shorten during the movement. From this position, you may imagine that you have a bear hug grip on the bag already, it's just sideways at the moment. The next part is all about hip extension. Think about what you'd naturally do in order to jump as high as you can. You'd instinctively load your joints by bending your knees and hips slightly before initiating the jump. This is to generate more power, and we want the same thing here with the sandbag. When your arms are in position, 
Take a deep breath while at the same time loading the hips by extending your knees slightly and raising your butt higher into the air. Once you have your air, violently extend your hips into the bag. The power of this hip thrust will cause the side of the bag with your arm underneath to flip in a sense. The bag should now be vertical rather than horizontal. You're now in the perfect position to do a bear hug carry. Everything I said about breathing and bracing from before applies here as well, but there are a few added things to think about. Whereas before when the bag was down near waist level, we could afford to let the ribs move freely, this is no longer the case. If you let too much air out of your ribs, your lungs will be shut down by the bag pressing against you and you won't be able to breathe at all. I like to imagine the entire torso as one solid unyielding mass. Try to maintain a brace from your neck all the way down to your hips while taking shallow breaths that go in and out of your stomach. With the bear hug carry, if you let too much air out and let your lungs deflate too far, you're screwed. Again, this is a balancing act and will take some time to get the hang of. But once you find your rhythm, breathing and bracing becomes second nature, and you can focus more on maintaining full body rigidity and taking another step forward rather than making breathing your sole focus. This pretty much sums up everything you need to know about carrying a sandbag. But there is still another way to get into that bear hug position that bypasses part of what we had to do before. You can start with the bag resting long ways on the ground rather than horizontally if you'd like. The most difficult part of lifting the bag this way will be finding the correct hand placement. When lifting a sandbag this way, you'll need to place your hands near enough to its center of mass that it doesn't just flip over when you try to lift it, but also low enough so you can raise the bag high enough to rest on your lap. If you grab too high, the bag won't clear your knees and you'll fail the lift. Once you know where to grab, getting your hands into position is actually a bit easier here and seems to take less time, which makes it easier to maintain that brace. Use one of your hands to roll the bag onto the other, then do the same in reverse. Wedge your hands further underneath the bag with each push until you feel secure enough to lift the bag. From here, everything is pretty much the same as before. Lift the bag and rest it on your lap. From here, simply wrap your hands around the bag in that bear hug position, rebrace, lift it to chest height with that hip thrust motion, and get walking. And that's all there is to it. Hopefully this video will have cleared some things up for you guys. I'm always glad to make videos about sandbag training as it's one of my favorite things ever. So I hope you liked the video and until next time, thanks for watching.